Welcome in to Run the League. I'm your host, Grayson Grunhafer, and it is finally over. I hope y'all won many, many leagues. This year was not great for me. I got second in one league. I got third in two other leagues. I lost in the semifinals in four or five leagues. Uh, it was not the greatest year, and, and unfortunately, that happens sometimes. But just making the playoffs is obviously the goal. And if you can win a league, that that's the key, obviously. If you can win one, you kind of make up for all the other leagues. That didn't happen for me this year. I came up three points short, thanks to Najee Harris. But this week, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of looking back at the season, some superlatives, some awards I'm going to hand out to some of the key fantasy producers from the year. Uh, so sit back and relax and enjoy. Hopefully this is a, a good one and will provide some clarity on how the season ended up. All right, everyone, welcome in. This is the postseason awards episode of run the league. And today we're going to go through a bunch of different awards. I'm going to hand out awards for a bunch of various things from rookie of the year to uh, the one year away award, which I'm excited about. Most annoying player. I'm sure many of y'all had a guy like that that was on many of your fantasy rosters, a uh, bus hits, everything like that. So let's get started with the rookie of the year award. And I got to tell you, this award for me finished literally this weekend. And the reason for it is because Jamar Chase went absolutely bonanza against the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I was so impressed with what Jamar Chase was able to do. He had a lot of busts this year, a lot of questionable games, but he also had those massive, massive games. And for a rookie to give you 55 fancy points in the championship, that wins you the award for Rookie of the Year. Uh, some other guys that I think were in the mix, uh, Najee Harris, Kyle Pitts, Jalen Waddell, all three of those guys were really, really good. But Jamar Chase gets the award just because of the, the those huge games that he had were just a complete difference maker for him. And I think next year, he's probably going to be a second round pick in startup drafts. Uh, he's just fantastic. And that kind of ceiling and that a relationship he has with Joe Burrow is really, really fascinating. And it's going to be something to watch in the playoffs as well. I'm really intrigued to see how that relationship continues to build uh, on the field. Uh, the One Year Away Award. So this is an award that I'm giving out to the guy who was maybe solid this year, showed flashes, but next year he's going to really turn into a true difference maker in fantasy football. And for me, that's Denver Broncos running back Javante Williams. Javante was really good this year. He was really solid when he got the opportunities, but so was Melvin Gordon. And the problem is they were taking away carries from each other, taking away receptions from each other, and really just taking away the workload from each other. Now, Denver might bring back Melvin Gordon. That wouldn't shock me. But I think by this time next year, we're going to be talking about Javante Williams as a top 10 running back, uh, a guy who really has moved into that upper echelon of running backs just because he's going to get more of a workload. And I also think their offense will be better. I mean, it doesn't really matter who their quarterback is. Uh, I think he'll be solid. If they were to get a guy like Aaron Rodgers, well, then Javante Williams just takes uh, a massive step forward. Uh, so yeah, Javante Williams, the one year away award for me this year. Most annoying player. This is all going to be about kind of your teams, right? Because your most annoying player is going to be a guy that you had in a lot of leagues that really just ticked you off. And Mike Williams did that for me this year, the Chargers wide receiver. So he had five games of over 21 PPR points. He also had seven games of under eight PPR points. So it was that inconsistency that absolutely drove you crazy every week because you couldn't not start him because you knew he could go for 30 one week as he did twice this year. But the problem was a lot of times he was giving you eight point games and that just doesn't work in fantasy. That can really hurt you on a week to week basis. He finished his wide receiver 17. And I do want to preface this by saying, Mike Williams was like a 10th round pick. So you got him late and you got wide receiver 17. So you can't complain that much. But when he's on your roster and he starts off the way that he did, I mean, after the first five weeks, you were sitting there going, wow, Mike Williams might be a top five uh, wide receiver on the year. That did not end up happening. Solid year, but very annoying year because of the inconsistency for Mike Williams. 
So this, these next two are going to be kind of more about my opinions coming into the, the season. Uh, so the player I was most wrong about was Debo Samuel. So he ended up being the wide receiver three on the season, and he was drafted as your wide receiver three or four. I was not touching Debo at all this year, and the reason for it is because I thought Brandon Ayuk was going to have a really nice year, and they were kind of going to take away attempts from each other and receptions and targets, and that just did not happen. Debo was the clear target hog on this team, along with George Kittle, and Debo deserves some respect. Going into next year, he finally stayed healthy. Great for Debo. If you had him on your roster, congratulations, because you probably had a really good season. I did not have Debo in any leagues, and I paid for it because I played him twice in the finals of the playoffs, and he really, really torched me. It was tough to sit back and watch that. The player I was most right about is Jonathan Taylor. So Jonathan Taylor, towards the end of draft season, he was kind of getting lowered and lowered in people's rankings. You know, to open the the season, he was a top five running back in most people's eyes. But by the time the season started or right before the season began, it seemed like Jonathan Taylor was falling back to like ninth or 10th in that first round. And in pretty much every league, if I had the sixth overall pick, Jonathan Taylor was my selection. And that's why I have him in a lot of different leagues. I also paid up in my auction league. I paid a ton of money for him in that auction league format. Uh, he was the highest paid player that I spent on. Uh, so yeah, Jonathan Taylor, obviously RB1 this year, a guy that if you have him on your roster, you probably had a pretty nice season. Uh, he did not quite show up in the playoffs like I think most people were hoping for, especially that semifinal performance where he ran for over 100 yards, but he only gave you 12 PPR points. It might have cost you, and it did cost me in my semifinals, but overall, he was just fantastic this year, um, and I'll get to him at the end because he's going to win another award, um, but with all the running back injuries... He was very, very important. So my biggest hits this year, I'm going to go through each position and give you the biggest hit that I had on both, or, or not just that I had, but they just really excelled and kind of overperformed where either they were drafted or their expectations coming into the season. So the quarterback position, that was Jalen Hurts, the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. He ends up as a top eight quarterback. Obviously, he missed a game, so if you put that in there, he really, on average, was right around that top five number, and he was solid, and honestly, he made the Eagles a playoff contender, and it looks like this is going to be his job for the future. Many people thought he would get replaced. That did not happen. He ended up having a very successful year. You probably got him in like the 10th round, so you're pretty happy if you had Jalen Hurts as your quarterback by season end. He was a guy I was really high on, so I was pretty happy with the season that he had. Finals week was not great for him, but overall in general, you're pretty happy with what Jalen Hurts gave you throughout the season. At running back, this guy is going to win my most improved player, and obviously, he's the biggest hit, in my opinion, at the running back position, and you got him off the waiver wire. He's also the top waiver wire ad uh, in my eyes as well, and that's Cordero Patterson. I mean, what a year for this guy. He went from 4.2 PPR points in 2020 to 15.4 in 2021. This guy just had an amazing year. He broke, I mean, I mean, he just completely broke out, and you probably got him for pretty cheap on your waiver wire if you got him early enough. And he just was terrific. I mean, for most of the season, he was a top eight running back. That kind of shifted towards the end of the year. Uh, but I mean, you you had to be happy with the fact that he's a waiver wire ad, the fact that he's a running back. He could be used as a wide receiver. I mean, he just did so many things for so many different teams. And uh, he was locked and loaded in your lineup every single week. At wide receiver, the biggest hit is, again, Debo Samuel. Just go ahead and throw him in there. Wide receiver three. I mentioned why, but he just was terrific this year. And uh, for where you drafted him, he just completely overachieved. So congrats, again, if you drafted Debo Samuel. At tight end, this is a guy who there were high expectations for years, and you came into this season, and he was probably the fourth tight end taken, sometimes the fifth tight end taken, depending on how people viewed Kyle Pitts, to, you know, also TJ Hawkinson. It was kind of thought that it was Kelsey, Waller, Kittle, and then the next three together were Andrews, Hawkinson, and Pitts. And by, you know, after last week and really throughout the course of the season, the tight end one on the year has shifted. 
and it's been Travis Kelsey for years, and now it's Mark Andrews. Congrats to Mark Andrews. He was fantastic this year. If you drafted him, you probably got him in like the sixth or seventh round, and you had a clear advantage at the tight end position every single week, even when you faced Travis Kelsey. Mark Andrews, just absolutely fantastic. And I know a lot of people have been saying, you know, it was Mandrews' time for the last couple of years, and it didn't quite pan out completely. This year, it absolutely did. Moving on to my biggest bust for the season. At quarterback, it pains me to say this because he had such a nice performance in the year, but it's Russell Wilson. And I don't like to use guys who were injured for the whole year. Now, he missed quite a few games, so I'm going to not hold that part against him, but what I am going to hold against him is the fact that he had four games this year of under 10 fantasy points. That is absolutely disappointing. You also have to keep in mind that he was one of the top five quarterbacks taken in your draft. So for him to finish the way that he did, even when he was on the field, he was fairly unproductive. He had some nice boom games, but again, you, it's just hard to make up for those four games where he was just really, really bad. And he probably cost your team wins and losses. I can't imagine many teams that won the championship had Russell Wilson as their quarterback. Uh, so yeah. Really disappointed in Russell Wilson this year, especially with where you drafted him. Also, at the running back position, my bust this year is Saquon Barkley. Saquon, man, I, I mean, it just was really tough for him. Um, even when he was healthy, he just wasn't very good. They used Devontae Booker a ton. Uh, this year did not pan out for him at all. There's a reason why he dropped towards the beginning of the season uh, in ADP. He started becoming a second-round pick. And hopefully you did not take him because if you had Saquon, it just was completely disappointing and you didn't get the production that you were looking for out of your top two pick. A lot of people took him in the first round because they had to before uh, the injuries popped up. So yeah, Saquon, really, really tough at the wide receiver position at, or at the running back position. At wide receiver though, it gets really tough. There were a lot of busts this year, but the two guys that I have to highlight are Allen Robinson and Brandon Ayuk. Uh, by the time the season was about to begin and drafts were almost over, Brandon Ayuk was creeping up into that sixth round. And my goodness, was he terrible this year. I mean, he didn't play at the beginning, wasn't even getting on the field. It looked like there was dysfunctional relationship between he and the 49ers organization. Eventually, by the end of the year, at least he was on the field, but the production just was not there for where you paid up to try to get Brandon Ayuk. Also, Allen Robinson, it's a tie there for me because Allen Robinson was terrible. And a part of it is because his quarterback play was just awful. Justin Fields had a really, really bad season for the most part, and it really impacted Allen Robinson. Then he got COVID late in the year, and that kind of, again, just got rid of all hopes for him to flip the script a little bit. Never happened. Allen Robinson was probably a fourth-round pick in many of your drafts and he was terrible. Uh, so those two guys, big, big busts at the wide receiver position. Moving on to tight end, again, I don't like to use injuries, but in this case, I kind of have to because Darren Waller was getting drafted in the second or third round. I mean, you, you spent just so much draft capital on him, and yes, he was injured for some of the season, but he also was not the tight end that you were looking for when he was on the field. He had some buzz games, was inconsistent, and for the most part, just underwhelmed this season. And it's really unfortunate because it looked like after the first couple weeks, he was going to have a massive breakout year. Did not happen that way. I expect him to be fine in the future, but this year just was not the year for Darren Waller at the tight end. He is my bust at the tight end position. So now what everyone's been waiting for, fantasy MVP now, guys, I had a lot of problems trying to pick my fantasy MVP, and it came down to two names. And I think this is going to be very popular across the board. These two guys were the clear-cut fantasy MVPs for the entire season, and it was Cooper Cup and Jonathan Taylor. Now, I had to make them co-MVPs for one specific reason. So, Cooper Cup averaged 25.7 fantasy PPR points per game. Uh, Devontae Adams was down at 21.6. So you see the huge disparity there. And that makes you think you have to go with Cooper Cup in this situation. But I just did not view that as the case. And the reason for it is because Jonathan Taylor 
plays running back. And with all the injuries at the running back position, he was that one consistent who every week was playing such good football and giving you an advantage over the other running backs. And, you know, in a lot of leagues, people had to go pick up waiver wire running backs to try to supplement for Christian McCaffrey or Saquon or Nick Chubb who missed time or Kareem Hunt or, you know, a bunch of guys who got injured. Uh, Aaron Jones missed time. Alvin Kamara missed time. And, And so, so many running backs getting injured. Jonathan Taylor playing every single game was just massive. Just he gave you that consistency in your lineup at the running back position, the most important position in fantasy football. I had to make them co MVPs just because Cooper Cup was amazing this year. Jonathan Taylor just made up huge ground at the running back position and, and really gave you a safe floor every week. So both of these guys deserve MVP. I'm going to make them co-MVPs, but like I said, if I had to lean towards one, it would be Taylor just because of the injuries at the running back position. So those are my awards for the 2021 season. What a year it was in fantasy football. Tons of injuries, tons of pivoting, tons of waiver wire moves. Hopefully, I was able to help you out and guide you to a fantasy football championship this year. Uh, But until next year, this has been Run the League with Grayson Grudy. Thank you.